TV Grace presents the inexpressible words of God, the gospel of grace on the lips of Jesus Christ men. Abba Father. Blessed with every spiritual blessing. Greetings to the beloved and all my collaborators that are forming a great army, a mighty army to proclaim the good news of salvation, to proclaim the lies. And we're not just a few, but many. That word many, it's very important because he came to save the many. The sacrifice that took place 2,000 years ago were to, was to save the many. Today's topic is prevaricators of the truth, prevaricators. So then I looked in dictionaries to see what it says regarding a prevaricator. Not a preacher, but a prevaricator. Though I've found that all preachers are prevaricators, preachers prevaricators. So be prepared for what we're going to speak. A preacher prevaricator is a person who knows he is lying. And when he is confronted in his mind, he struggles not to give in. And in his moments of silence, he knows he is wrong, but the lack of humility does not allow him to accept it. There are poor measures, or as they say out there, a dog with two legs. Paul called them dogs. We added the two legs, so we know what type of dogs we're speaking about. Uh, look, we are confronted by others. We are confronted consistently by others. And I was sharing with Martin, and I said, if the system were to confront you or a person that loves you, and with the Bible, they show you that you are wrong, what would you do? Martin says, Apostle, as much as I appreciate you and love you, but if we're wrong, we're wrong. All I want is the truth because Martin is an amador of the truth. I am an amador of truth. People say, how do you dare call yourself the man Christ Jesus? You don't know the struggles I have with that. Listen, I would confront myself day and night because I already knew it before saying it, but I would confront myself and seek to see if it was my ego or the lack of realization of whatever it was. I confronted myself. I sought my heart to see if I was looking for popularity or to be the last announcement. No, I finally did it for the love, for the love of the beloved, because I realized after seeking the old covenant, the new, all of the prophecies, the vision I had, all of that, the teaching, Romans 2.16, which is one of the verses that most supports who I am, that I am the only one in 2,000 years that preaches according to the gospel of Paul. And Paul said when the Lord was to appear, he would use Paul's foundation, his gospel, not that of the apostles, circumcision that's already canceled. Paul said when Jesus was to, is to appear, he's going to preach according to my gospel. And who's the only one that preaches according to the gospel of Paul? And who is the only one that says that he appeared without relation to sin and so forth? If they confront me and I realize that I am wrong, I would rather die on by the shore or rather in the middle of the lake rather than at the edge of the shore. If we're wrong against the truth, nothing. So therefore, the prevarication that they did with Jesus of Nazareth after he died, after he died for our sins, the prevaricators of the apostles hid the meaning of his death. The apostles were the ones to fault for hiding the true significance of the death of Jesus of Nazareth. When I say the apostles, I refer to the first Pope, Peter, and all of the rest. How did they do it with a mass, which seems that is in favor of Jesus? And what they do is denying Christ every Sunday in a mass, a rosary. It seems they love Jesus when the rosary has a cross. 
And the cross is a symbol of a curse, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Curse is everyone who hangs on a cross. So a cross is not a blessing, rather a curse. That's why I don't carry crosses, nor have crosses. The artists or actors have them in their necks, in their ear, uh, even in their tongues, they put them. But they hid them in a Eucharist, in a host, in a host, in a piece of bread that they put in their tongue, and they look dumb with that piece of host in their tongue, that old host, and they want to hide him in that as if that were the body of Christ. Imagine in a confessional, stinks, <laughs> or in a Our Father. Well, so then, um, the prevaricators, prevaricator, the reverend prevaricator, the priest prevaricator, the father prevaricator, they're prevaricators. Those who come against us are prevaricators. All of these Protestant pastors, the priests, people that know they're lying, prevaricators. As one I met in Costa Rica that will come against everything I teach. How are you going to say that the devil has been destroyed? How are you going to say that the devil don't exist with all the evil in the world? And after he left, he says between his teeth, but it would be awesome if it were truth that he doesn't exist because it seems like that poor man lived, slept, and dreamt with the devil. He would see the devil in the coffee in the morning and the soup in the afternoon and his, his meal in the evening. Devil, devil, devil. And finally he says, well, it would be awesome if he didn't exist. Well, let me tell you, let me give you good news. He was destroyed. So then let's see how the prevarication begun and how Jesus warned of it. First, in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 5 and 6, look at what that verse says. It says, do not go into the ways of or the way of the Gentiles. Don't go there. Why did Jesus say, don't go through the ways of the Gentiles? It's wrong to go through a different country and preach? No. He says, when you go to the Gentiles with that, your message, don't go with the message of circumcision. That's for the sheep of the people of Israel, of the Israelites. Not for the Gentiles, because Jesus was a perfect legalistic individual fulfilling the law. So he says, don't go through the ways of the Gentiles and do not enter in the cities of the Samaritans. The Samaritans. Don't do that because that the circumcision is not for the Gentiles because Jesus knew that we were going to see receive something better. So what was coming for us? I'm going to show it to you in the letters of Paul and also what the prophet Jeremiah says. But let me go to the letter of Paul. Let's go to the book of Hebrew, chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10. In verse 16 through 18, it says, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in to their hearts and in their minds, I will write them. That's why you see when I put my fingers here, when I greet you, what I am saying is, hey, this is where the covenant is written in my mind because mine is synonymous to spirit. In, in their minds, I will write them. When I'm doing this, what I am telling you is look at yourself within blessed because there, here, it's where the covenant is. Don't look at don't look for it out of you. And he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. A mass is remembrance of sin. Someone bringing you to an altar is remembrance of sin. He says he will never remember. Well, it says now where there's remission of these many, not just the sin of Adam, these many, where there's remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. 
why there is no longer an offering for sin? Because he's forgotten them. He's removed them. So then if you say that there's sin, there has to be an offering for sin. If you say that there's still sin, well, you have to continue presenting offerings and repentance and many sacrifices because you say that there is sin. But it says where there's remission, where sins have been paid for and he's paid with death, not just any lamb. They said there is the lamb of God giving you to understand that the sheep in the old covenant were presented for forgiveness of sin. But this was the only lamb of its class that were pay, was paying for our sin. And he redeemed them. He removed them. And there's no longer offerings for sin. You no longer have to be, Lord, that I am going to make a sacrifice. I'm going to dress in a sack. I'm going to give you an offering or make a promise or put on some slippers or a belt the color of. You have to do none of that because the matter is here in your mind. Now, notice what Jer Jeremiah says. You, do you think that Paul was crazy? No, Paul always refer to the prophets. As a matter of fact, it was the most worthy or trustworthy apostle because the others were tax collectors, thieves. Uh, <laughs> he chose 14 wicked men, imagine, to, so they can do their misdeeds to commit the prevarication of the temple as Daniel spoke. The violation that was already coming, that was a plan that God had already mapped out to resemble now in the closing of the film, the best time. Look at what Jeremiah, Jeremiah says in chapter 31, 33 to 35, three verses. It says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judea. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took their hands to take them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which was broken through I was a husband to them, saith the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their mind. I will write them in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall remember, know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities and their sins I will remember no more. That's the ministry we belong to. We don't remember them. The Catholics remember every Sunday, and they remember in every message they preach, a pastor, a priest, thus say the Lord who gives suns for the light of day and ordinance of the moon, for the stars for the light of night, who disperse the seas and its waves roar as the sun shines every day. That's how firm this word is. There is no sin blessed. He's forgotten them. He's thrown them behind his back. He's threw them to the bottom of the sea. There's no way to find you in sin. No one after the cross. So then Jesus knew a better covenant was coming. That's why he told the apostles, don't bring that to the Gentiles. Don't cause any harm to them. Don't deceive them. But Peter and all of the disciples deceived humanity. They brought poverty to the nations. They destroyed nations. They're the ones to fault. That is the mystery of iniquity. The most wicked men. Forget about Ben Latin and Jude. The worst is Rome. The Catholic system as the world and presidents don't realize that we will continue to see plagues and we will see to see condemnation in the nations. Why? Because of that curse that exists in Rome. As they continue to honor that Pope in every country, that's where you see the plagues of AIDS and, and all kinds of uh, diseases manifest. So then the prevarication consists in this I'm going to say now. Let's finish 
with these steps where was prevarication, where did it begin? Number one, to put Paul to death there in the book of Acts chapter 21 through 23. Read those two chapters so you can see how the elders of Jerusalem fast and pray and they said, we're not going to eat until we kill Paul. They try to call him. Remember that they put him down uh, uh, on, a, on a basket because it wasn't the time yet. But when he got to Rome, that's where they killed him. Uh, Peter and Cornelius and all his, his enemies because he preached different to us. We have to kill him. They saw him as an antichrist because he preached Christ after the cross. He doesn't preach Jesus of Nazareth, the one that came. It's that after he died, there was another covenant that was established according to better promises. And we will speak about those things later on. So the number one thing was to give death to the Apostle Paul. Number two was to preach another gospel, that of circumcision. That we can see clearly in the book of Galatians. When Paul, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, Paul says, it says, but it, even if we or an angel from heaven, Peter uh, 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 was seen as an angel, preach another gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be anathema. anathema. Let it be a curse. The one we preach, the gospel we preach is that of Paul. That that Rome preaches is circumcision. That's why they're under a curse. All ministries are under a curse. If you have not married to the one that's risen, you are under a curse. I can tell you that with a sm smile or serious, I'm not bothered. If you are not in the 14 epistles of Paul, you are in Athena, you are cursed. You are preaching for your belly, for dishonest gains. Those tithings you collect, those offerings, those alms you collect in mass, those are dishonest gains. You are stealing, robbing God. So then notice that Paul even battled with Paul with Peter in Galatians 1.18, it says, then after three years, I went to Jerusalem. To where? To Jerusalem. To see whom? Peter. That's where Peter was in Jerusalem and remained with him 15 days. In 15 days, you know, listen, Peter, don't be offended. Don't be bothered with me. I have a different gospel. My gospel is that of the uncircumcision and yours is circumcision. Circumcision is what Jesus told you don't bring to the Gentiles. So please, don't be a prevaricator. But you know that Peter wasn't going to let his arm be twisted. He was a prevaricator. He was the first prevaricator that exists in the Bible. But he knew that Paul was telling him the truth. And he says, well, I'm not going to have my arm twisted. I walked with Jesus. I'm going to show him I have reason. No way. This man is wrong. And he would speak with John and James. But since there were two Three prevaricators together, imagine. Peter, John, and James, three bandits, musketeers of the Bibles, the three men that cause harm to the world, that they're the ones that they have in every cathedral when you walk in, in idols. So then, that's verse 18. Now, in chapter 2, 14 years went by, and in those 14 years, Peter that cause a lot of harm, harm per year, 14 years. So after 14 years, he went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas. Man, so these people, I speak to them clearly, and they continue to preach the lies. This Peter is evil. 14 years he waited and again, he gathers with them. He gave them an opportunity to reflect. So then in Galatians 2, 7, look at what it says. It says, he made it very clear here. He says, but on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision had been committed to me as the gospel for the circumcision was to Peter. Naturally, 
Peter's was canceled when Jesus died. But then they continued preaching the same. There in verse 11, Peter is bothered and he says, well, I, though they say I am upset or I am bothered, but I take, I am bothered. This is what I'm going to do. So then he goes and confronts Peter. Now, when Peter, the prevaricator, came to Antioch, Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed, to condemn. He was an anathema. He was cursed. And if you read the rest of the verses, he calls him a hypocrite, a man in fear. What didn't he call Peter? So then finally, in verse 14, he uncovers the situation. But when I saw that these prevaricators didn't walk straight forward according to the truth of the gospel, finally, I said to Peter before all, listen, if you are a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles, how are you going to mix those two things? Don't mix them. That is the Protestants' problems. They're, they mix the religious system, they use these books, Peter, uh, James, first and second, third of John, Jude, Revelations, you can't mix those two with the 14, those books with the 14 epistles. You're mixing muratic uh, acid with coffee that blinds you, keeps a veil over your eyes. When you read James, and the epistles of Peter, John, Jude, and Revelations, those are eight books that are contaminated by the writers uh, that are of the circumcision, that canceled gospel, that end at the cross. So if you don't know that, you mix them. In mixing them, you don't know what you're doing. You're bringing death in the pot to the people. How many more years are you going to do that? Plus, you have to study from Romans to Hebrews so that you can know what is the truth of the gospel. So you can see, so you don't mix because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So then, last but not least, preach another Jesus. Look at it, look at it here. I know this is a little tough for the religious system. Why did Paul say, if another comes preaching another Jesus, second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4, says, for if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you received a different spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which we have not accepted, you will you will put up with it. This is to say, I've already told you that I was given the gospel for you, the Gentiles. Now you're going to allow for Peter to come and preach Jesus before the cross? That's why he tells them there in Galatians 3.1. Let's look at Galatians 3.1. Bless all foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you so you should not obey the truth before whom's eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? As it's to say, he's already crucified. How are you going to continue presenting him as Jesus of Nazareth? Remember that the apostasy in the final days deals with mixing Jesus of Nazareth with the risen one. It's not that we are against Jesus of Nazareth to the contrary. We are honoring his death. He died to place you after he was risen from the dead. And that's where you have to place your eyes because after he was risen, Paul is the only one that teaches him in the power of his resurrection. So I will end by saying this. The prevarication consists of killing Paul to Judaize with the old covenant to preach another Jesus. And who were they? We will end with this. How did Paul think of the apostles? Second letter to the Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, verse 13 through 15. This is what Paul thinks, and I do also. How about you? Do you think this way? Verse 13, for such are false apostles. The only apostles that exist back then, it was Peter and the rest of them and Paul. 
This Paul says, those 11 are false apostles. Deceitful workers, they transform themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, because Satan also transformed himself as a minister of light. So therefore, don't be, you know, surprised even if ministers transform themselves ministers of righteousness whom their end will be the Vatican exploding in fire. That's going to be destroyed. It's going to come an earthquake that's going to blow up that city. And how I rejoice that that's going to take place because that's what their own book says in Revelation that the Vatican will be consumed in fire. Therefore, blessed it will be to another occasion where I will bring a word that guarantees permanent change in your life and to edify you as the beloved of the Lord. A kiss, greetings to all, blessed.